So the elbow joint is one of those joints where a couple of special tests can make a huge difference to your clinical reasoning and your diagnosis. So in this video, I'm gonna show you five of the most important ones that I use in my practice. If that sounds good, let's dive in. Hey guys, I'm Khalid, welcome back to Clinical Physio. So the first test I'd like to show you is one for lateral epicondylitis or tennis elbow, one of the most common conditions that you're gonna see in your clinics. So the test has been supported by evidence from Pitts, Ull and Day 2021 when they noted that patients with lateral epicondylitis tend to have decreased grip strength when grip is tested at zero degrees elbow extension compared to 90 degrees elbow flexion. And therefore, we can use a handheld dynamometer, as you can see on the screen, to do a grip strength test with these patients. Quite simply, we ask the patient to hold the handheld dynamometer at zero degrees extension, and then we get them to repeat the test with their elbow at approximately 90 degrees of flexion. Here, if you find a 5 to 10% reduction in the grip strength at the 0 degrees elbow extension position, this is a positive for lateral epicondylitis. Now, you might be familiar with other lateral epicondylitis tests, such as Morsley's test or Cozen's test, but this one in recent times has been shown to be more sensitive and specific. So this is the one that I tend to use the most in practice now. So the second test is called the hook test, and this is used to diagnose a distal biceps tendon rupture. So the idea with the hook test is that we're looking to see if we can palpate the patient's distal biceps tendon. So to do so, we place their arm in a position of 90 degrees shoulder abduction with a neutral shoulder rotation position, 90 degrees of elbow flexion, and full supination. And in that position, you should be able to palpate the distal biceps tendon in the cubital fossa. And if you can't palpate it, then this might be an indication that your patient has had a rupture of that tendon alongside a relevant trauma, of course. Now, this test was most recently researched by Lucala et al. 2020, and they found that it had a 78% sensitivity in all distal biceps tendon tears and an 83% sensitivity in complete distal biceps tendon tears. So it's well worth knowing, especially because if your patient has had a distal biceps tendon rupture, it needs to be at acted upon quickly. So we need to be able to do this test and find the results in a relatively speedy manner so that we can refer that patient on to orthopedics. So the third test is Tinel's test for the cubital tunnel. So the cubital tunnel of your elbow is found on the medial side. It's a little groove between the olecranon and the medial epicondyle of the humerus. And in that little tunnel runs the ulnar nerve. So if your patient has an ulnar neuropathy or an ulnar nerve entrapment, they might be experiencing symptoms like pins and needles, numbness, or perhaps pain in the fourth and fifth fingers of the hand, because that is the ulnar sensory distribution. So to do this test, we quite simply find the cubital tunnel on our patient, and then we repeatedly tap like all Tinel's tests in that area directly onto the ulnar nerve for between 30 to 60 seconds. And we're looking to see if it reproduces our patient's symptoms of pain, pins and needles, or numbness in that fourth and fifth finger distribution of the hand. If it does, that would be considered a positive result and may indicate that your patient has a problem with the ulnar nerve. Now, I love this test because it's so simple to do. And so it's the go-to one that I use for cubital tunnel syndrome. And this has been researched to have a 70% sensitivity in the research. So well worth knowing. So number four is the moving valgus stress test, which is used to look at injury or instability of the medial collateral ligament of the elbow, researched by O'Driscoll, Lawton, and Smith in 2005 to have 100% sensitivity and 75% specificity for medial collateral ligament injuries. So to do this test, we passively bring our patient's elbow into 90 degrees of flexion with full supination before providing a valgus force to the elbow. 
we then extend the elbow whilst maintaining that valgus force. And if it's positive, we might elicit either instability or pain at that medial elbow location where our medial collateral ligament is. Now, the key thing to say about this test is that it can be quite irritable if your patient has an injury in that region. So be sure to take your time and consider doing this test in the right patient. And if you want more information about it, there's a link in the description below where you can see our full video on it. So the final test I wanted to take you through is the chair push-up test, which is used to diagnose posterolateral rotatory instability at the elbow joint. Now, instability in this region comes when we have injury to the lateral ligament complex of the elbow, which is made up of the radial collateral ligament, the lateral ulnar collateral ligament, and the annular ligament. And this is often first injured with a trauma such as an elbow dislocation or can happen alongside a fracture. And often it can get missed that this ongoing instability is occurring in our patients. What does it look like? Well, patients will describe instability, clunking, clicking, or perhaps pain, going from 30 degrees of elbow flexion to full extension whilst weight bearing. So, for example, pushing up from a chair. And therefore, it makes this test really specific to this particular injury. So how do we do the test? Quite simply, we ask our patient to push up from a chair and we're going to be placing their elbows in 90 degrees of abduction with full supination and 90 degrees of elbow flexion. And once again, as they move between 30 degrees of flexion to full extension, if they feel those symptoms of clunking, clicking, instability or pain, then it's considered a positive test for posterolateral rotatory instability. Now, I really like this test because it's so simple to do with your patient simply sat in the chair and they have full control of the test because they're the one that's moving. Regan and Lapner in 2006 found that this test has an 88% sensitivity when it comes to posterolateral rotatory instability. But if it's combined with the prone push-up test, and both are positive, then there is a 100% sensitivity for posterior lateral rotatory instability. So it's well worth knowing this test and also if you want the prone push-up test to be able to diagnose this in your patients. So guys, I really hope you've enjoyed looking at this video at Special Tests for the Elbow. If you have, we'd be super grateful if you could smash that like button. And if you want even more from Clinical Physio, head to our website at clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid Maidan. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you really soon right here on Clinical Physio.